Welcome back, y'all, and today we're getting to know the Ghost Mantis. Oddly resembling withering leaves, the Ghost Mantis is a very unique looking species. They are a smaller and more docile species of mantis, only getting to be about two inches in size. And while often are dark brown in color, they can also be found in light brown, tan, and even green. Now, the ghost mantis typically lives between six to eight months, but in captivity under optimum conditions have been found and recorded to live as long as 18 months. With their ability to thrive in a wide range of conditions, along with their small tank size requirements, they make a great beginner pet for insect enthusiasts. With their small size, the minimum tank requirements for the ghost mantis is three times the mantis size for height and two times the mantis size in width along with a tight fitting lid, preferably with a mesh screen top that will allow for good ventilation and for your mantis to be able to hang on, but not enough space to allow for flies to escape. Now, if you get a young mantis, then you may have to upgrade their tank slowly along with the mantis's size. If a young mantis is put in too large of an enclosure, they may not be able to find their food in the tank. With the ghost mantis being one of the less cannibalistic species of mantis, you technically can house more than one mantis in a larger enclosure, but it's definitely not recommended to do if you are a beginner. Now, the ideal temperature for the ghost mantis is 78 degrees. Having said that, they can tolerate a wide temperature range of between 65 to 80 degrees, so you may or may not need to provide your enclosure with low level overhead heating. The tank also needs to maintain humidity levels of between 50 to 70%. Light daily misting using distilled or dechlorinated water will help you maintain your humidity levels along with providing a drink for your mantis. Now, while you are misting though, you do want to avoid spraying your mantis directly. You will also want to avoid using plain tap water as this contains harmful chemicals such as chlorine and chloramines that can hurt your mantis. In your tank, you will want to provide a perching area for your mantis such as a live plant, fake plant, large twig, or small branch. This will help your mantis in its molting process. Typically when molting, your mantis will climb up and hang from the top of the enclosure. If you are keeping live plants or real branches, you'll wanna properly quarantine or treat them to make sure they are safe and free of any pests, pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides before placing them in with your mantis. For your substrate, you can use paper towels, cocoa fiber, or sphagnum moss. Cocoa fiber and sphagnum moss can help to maintain humidity levels in your tank though, so they might be the best choice. When it comes to diet, ghost mantises will prefer flying insects. Fruit flies or bottle flies are often the best option when feeding these. Now, what you do feed your mantis will also depend on the age and size of your mantis. You wouldn't wanna feed them something that's too large that they can't handle. You wanna feed your mantis prey that is about the size of the mantis's head. Younger ghost mantises will typically be fed small fruit flies, while older mantises will be fed house flies, blue or green bottle flies. If you would like to know whether your mantis is male or female, once they get older or at least 37 days old, females will tend to be slightly larger than males and the base of their antenna will be wider and longer on males than females. Males also have a taller, more jagged crown and tend to be mostly black or gray in color, whereas females have a more symmetrical crown and are typically brown or green. So anyway, guys, that's all I really have for y'all today. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.